So my name is Kristen Townsend and I am the dietitian here at Palm. So I'm excited to present this webinar to you today and talk about how we can stay healthy through the holidays. We all know this can be kind of a difficult time to continue those healthy habits or incorporate new healthy habits. So I'm going to give you some strategies on how you can do that today. So to give you a little background about myself, I just started at Palm roughly five months ago. I did get my master's from the University of Kansas Medical Center. And uh, before that, I did get my bachelor's from Missouri State University. I'm also certified in integrative and functional medicine as well. And before Palm, I worked at KU Alzheimer's Center in Kansas City. And then I also worked on campus as the dietitian for all students, as well as some graduate research work. So I'm really excited to be here at Palm and get to know our members more and just be surrounded by like-minded people. So I'm excited to present this webinar today and I'm looking forward to continuing my career here with Palm. So I'm going to share my slides. Okay, let's make this full screen. Um, I will be answering some questions at the end, so feel free to put that in the Q&A throughout the presentation, and then I'll take a few minutes to um, look through them and answer them towards the end. Okay, so here's our outline. Move this screen up. So I'm first going to be talking about different biological changes that can occur during the fall and winter seasons. Um, just provide a little bit of science background into why we may be experiencing these changes internally. Also just gonna be talking a little bit about certain celebrations and challenges that come along with the celebrations, different nutrition tips to navigate the holidays, as well as holistic health tips that we can incorporate to help support our overall health. And then a few uh, healthy holiday recipes I'll be sharing as well. So during the winter, fall and winter months, we're adjusting to colder weather, shorter days and less sunlight. And we may experience a variety of changes, changes in our sleep, maybe having altered sleep or less sleep, um, maybe changes in our energy overall, in our mood, um, our gut health, immunity, and appetite, and also our weight. So we're going to dive into a little, little bit of each of these just to give you more a, of a background about, you know, changing into these different seasons. So the first one is sleep and energy. So you may notice changes in your sleep and overall energy, which is typically due to the changes in our circadian rhythms going into the fall and winter months. Since there's less sunlight, we are experiencing shorter days. And our circadian rhythm is really our internal clock. And this is responsible, uh, or it responds to light and darkness and has a lot of influence on many health parameters. So melatonin is the primary hormone that's involved with our circadian rhythm. And production of this hormone can become altered from less sunlight. And because of that, you may find yourself sleeping longer than normal um, than you were in the summer months. There was actually a study that was done by Harvard and they found that adults on average sleep about two and a half hours longer in October than any other month. Um, so we all may be experiencing that a little bit right now. And you know, as we begin to take in less ultraviolet rays from the sun, our bodies are trying to adapt with this with more sleep. Um, but a lot of times the quality of our sleep suffers. So we may be getting more sleep, but we may still wake up feeling fatigued and then have low energy going throughout the day. And we know that with the holiday season, this is a really busy time. So we tend to go out more, maybe stay up later and our sleep can suffer. Um, so sleep loss can make it difficult to 
manage our overall health. Sleep is so crucial for our health and um, our blood sugar, cognition, um, appetite, our weight, you know, so much. So super important to get good quality sleep for health, good energy and vitality throughout the day. So um, we'll be diving into that later on in this presentation. So on top of that, we may experience some changes in our mood. And also I wanna mention gut health as well. Um, but before we do that, I want you to take a look at this image on the right. And this is a really famous image. You've probably seen it before. Um, it's very apparent that, you know, they both have different expressions on their faces. And this image has a lot of different meanings to it. But what I wanna point out with it, the uh, person on the right side is facing the sunshine and has a big smile on their face. And sunshine definitely has a critical role in our overall mood. So with um, the less sunlight, we actually end up producing less serotonin. And serotonin is a neurotransmitter that is responsible for regulating our mood. It's produced by our central nervous system, and it's also produced by the bacteria in our gut. And low serotonin levels may lead to mood changes like anxiety or depression, frustration, maybe changes in our memory, our appetite, um, sleep patterns, among many others. So supporting our ser serotonin production is really crucial through um, the fall and winter seasons. And a way we can do that is to support our gut health. Actually, 90% of our serotonin is produced in our gut. And the brain and the gut are connected through our vagus nerve. And this is called the gut-brain axis. So gut health does, in fact, have a big role in our overall mood. And we're able to support our gut health through diet and other lifestyle factors. Um, which we will also dive into later on. Okay, another big change that you may experience um, during these months is changes in our immunity. So as we go into the colder months, we have an increased susceptibility to illness. And that's because colder temperatures create a friendly environment for cold and flu viruses to thrive. Also with increased stress and busy schedules, this can lead to a weakened immune system. And then not to mention with less sunlight, we will have less vitamin D production, which is an important vitamin for our immunity and um, is also associated, low vitamin D levels is associated with increased risk of infection particularly COVID-19. Um, so getting, you know, good sunlight is important even through the winter months. If you're able to get outside and get some sunshine, um, fresh air, that is great for our immune system. But also gut health. That is on this slide as well because 70% of our immune system is actually found within our gut. So Going back to the gut again, uh, gut, gut health is huge in how we feel, our mood, our energy, and our immunity. Um, you know, through the holidays, we have access to a lot of calorie dense, high sugar foods, and a lot of these foods um, can feed our harmful bacteria that's in our gut. And when we consume those foods, you know, it makes these harmful bacteria grow and essentially feeds the fire. So when we have poor gut health, we may experience changes in our mood and our immunity. So really important to help um, support our gut and provide it good nutrition. And also getting a variety of different whole foods, different fibers, Different fibers feed different healthy bacteria. And the more variety and diversity you have in your diet, the healthier your gut will become. Um, and we will dive into that in a little bit. 
So this is a big one that we think about going into the fall and winter is changes in our appetite and changes in our weight. So I really love this picture of this cat in the snow and this concept of winter is coming. For all my Game of Thrones fans out there, I'm sure you love that So, you know, evolutionally, we are wired to consume and conserve more energy through the winter months. So if you think back to our ancestors, the winter is a time where food is scarce and the earth is barren and um, our metabolism can actually, in fact, slow down during these months in hopes to conserve and um, conserve more energy for survival. But today in our world, we know that that's not the case. We have access to a lot of uh, foods just at our fingertips. So with our body's metabolism potentially slowing down and this evolutionally wired uh, to concern consume and conserve more energy, we could see changes in our weight uh, long term. So we also may experience some changes in our appetite and our hunger hormones. So leptin is a hormone that's produced by our fat cells, our adipose cells, and it signals when we are full and satisfied after a meal. Whereas ghrelin, the other hormone, is made in the stomach, and this signals when you are hungry. And actually, research shows we can see a decline in our leptin hormone during the fall and winter months, which means that we're more likely to consume more energy during this time because we don't have that signal telling us that we're full and satisfied. And then with consuming more energy-dense foods, uh, we may experience some insulin resistance and then also some weight gain. But so with all of these changes that may occur during this time, we're still able to incorporate healthy habits uh, that can support our health holistically through the holidays. So going into the holidays, you know, we all know this is a time of celebration. We have different parties, different events, different family gatherings we are attending. And typically all of these events are surrounded and involve food, um, whether that's feasting together at Thanksgiving or attending maybe a work party where there's a buffet or just going out to restaurants with loved ones. And it's not news that a lot of the foods that are served are less healthy um, than we typically have throughout the rest of the year. Um, and, you know, a lot of these foods are high in calories, um, sugars, processed ingredients. A lot of those holiday desserts um, and alcoholic drinks can mix in there. And it can be hard to stick to a healthy diet during that time, um, but we can still try to nourish ourselves well by consuming healthy foods and indulging wisely and incorporating other healthy habits during that time, which will ultimately make us feel better, have more energy to handle life um, with some vitality. And then this time, the holiday season, you know, we have busy schedules um, and it can be hard to manage and that can lead to increased stress. So when we have increased stress, this can raise our cortisol hormone. And when we have high chronic cortisol levels, this may lead to weight gain. Um, and it's been linked to greater intake of calorie dense foods and then also high blood sugars. So managing stress is another big aspect that we want to incorporate through the next couple of months. And then, um, you know, for this reason, it's important to keep your stress levels low, especially during the holidays when we have access to so many, you know, calorie dense foods and we may be um, intrigued to try more than we usually have. Um, and it's okay to eat these foods once in a while in moderation, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, but it's good to have good stress management organization through this time and 
just to remember the reason of the holidays is spending time with our loved ones. Okay, so I really like this image. You may have seen this one before as well. And this is just a good reminder and practice going into the holiday season. And that's a pra practice of mindfulness. So, you know, right now you can analyze your mind. Are you, is your mind full or are you being mindful? Um, so when your mind is full, you know, we're thinking about all the tasks that we have to do, um, our to-do list, past past events, upcoming events, and it can leave our brain kind of scrambled um, and just not in the present moment. So when we are shifting to being mindful, um, we're aware, we're living in the present moment without, you know, no judgment and just kind of letting life flow naturally and letting things occur um, freely. So mindfulness is bringing awareness to that present moment, and I would encourage all of you to practice this uh, during the holiday season and shifting your perspective to focus more on spending quality time with loved ones. And, you know, this is a special time that only comes once a year. So having that perspective, um, really being present with your family, friends, whoever it is, is going to help you have um, just fulfillment through through the holiday season and really enjoy this time. So that uh, moves on to mindful eating. So mindful eating is about opening the mind's awareness to our food and to the body before we eat, during we eat, and after eating. It is about eating with intention and paying attention. So, you know, next time you eat, trying to be present for at least the first couple bites and sips of anything. Um, it's reducing outside distractions, quieting your mind, and then also being aware of your five senses. So how does the food or beverage taste? How does it look? Um, how does it smell? What's the texture of it? And bringing your awareness to those senses can help you eat more mindfully and really savor and enjoy the food or beverage. The other thing that's really important with mindful eating is slowing down. We always like to, you know, eat like there's no tomorrow and just, you know, eat within a couple minutes. But it's really good for us to just slow down, take a couple deep breaths before we eat, and really chew your food thoroughly. So this is not only going to engage you in mindful eating, but it's going to help with digestion and absorption. So you're able to fully absorb those nutrients from your food. Um, and that can overall prevent like bloating, um, help prevent digestive discomfort, and so on. So here's a few questions you can ask yourself next time you eat or, you know, maybe thoughts of hunger arise. Ask yourself, am I hungry? Where am I in my body? Am I feeling hungry? Um, what do I really crave? You know, maybe not just what's conveniently at hand, but what really sounds good. And most important one, I think, is how can I nourish my body right now? Um, I want you to remember that what you eat can change how you feel and, you know, food and uh, beverages as well. Water is the most powerful medicine that we have. So uh, really focusing on fueling your body well is going to help you, you know, make sure you're getting enough nutrition um, and then incorporating the mindful eating will help to more enjoy your food and help with the absorption digestion as well. So, you know, putting this into practice, uh, trying to eat an entire meal in mindfulness and silence, maybe that looks like practicing with one meal a week or one meal a day, um, you know where you're at with that. So I would just encourage you to at least practice with one and see how you do and just pay attention um, to, you know, maybe what thoughts arise, but take a few deep breaths and, um, 
just being mindful and that will help overall. Oh, one more thing with this is, you know, we know what the heart wants. Um, so I think it's good to give the body what it needs and then still give the heart the nourishment that it needs. So you can keep that in mind as well. So this kind of goes hand in hand. So, um, you know, throughout the holiday season, desserts are everywhere during this time. And it, it is okay to consume some of these foods. You know, a lot of our favorite dishes only come once a year during the holiday season. And I want you all to be able to enjoy them. But it's, you know, how much are you having? And then how often, right? So this concept of the 80-20 rule, this is a really good rule of thumb to follow um, going into the holiday season, but also afterwards as well. And it helps to prevent, you know, restriction and create space for enjoying the more quote unquote fun foods in moderation um, while still keeping a clean, wholesome diet 80% of the time. So I always hear that people say, you know, uh, food is bad or food is good. And, you know, it's kind of a misconception. Food is not inherently bad or good. Food is just food. But we do know that, you know, some foods are more nourishing than others. Um, and, you know, we want to nourish our body well, give it a lot of good nutrition, but we're human. We want to, you know, enjoy some of those more fun foods, but Let's do it in moderation. And this 80-20 rule is just a good one to keep in mind. Um, the other thing is trying to reframe from the now or never nature of the holidays. Um, you know, making a deal with yourself that if you want to have the pumpkin pie, uh, you can have it. And when you demystify holiday foods and recognize that you can eat these foods anytime, you will be in better control of food choices. And then the other thing is try not to beat yourself up when, you know, overindulging happens because it's happened to the best of us. Uh, we all get carried away now and then. So when this happens, you know, just shift your mindset and think my next meal, I'm going to have a clean slate. And that's when I'm going to focus on eating more healthy, wholesome foods. Um, so that this, this rule is a good one to incorporate the moderation while still nourishing ourselves well. Okay. So the other thing is controlling our portions. Um, this can go hand in hand with moderation. So portions are a big thing that we can control and has a big influence on how many calories we consume. So these are a few tips. Um, for controlling portions is using a smaller plate. So a standard size portion will look uh, bigger on a smaller plate, whereas if it's on a larger plate, it's gonna look a lot smaller and make you feel dissatisfied. So just that little trick of using a smaller plate can help us um, feel fuller and also just not overdo it with our portions. The other thing is skipping the seconds. So when we go back for seconds, this can lead to us over consuming foods. So instead, you know, if you still feel hungry, a good rule is to wait roughly 20 minutes after eating, because it does take your brain and body about 20 minutes to recognize that it's full, which is that leptin hormone that we talked about before um, getting released and signaled. So, you know, slowing down, chewing your food thoroughly can also prevent overeating and making sure um, that you're consuming adequate portions. The other thing is when we go out to eat at restaurants, uh, we can also overconsume our portions. And restaurants are notorious for having big portions. Um, there was actually a study done that showed on average restaurants um, add two and a half servings more than the adequate portion size, and sometimes up to eight times. So whenever you go out, you know, if 
you realize this is a big portion, maybe save the other half for later and have for lunch the next day. Or, you know, maybe split that meal with someone you're at dinner with and see if they're willing to share. And then that way, you know, you're able to consume good portions, not feel overstuffed and um, have good energy as well. And then that will help save a lot of calories in overeating. So I want to point out this little plate to the right. Um, so this is another just good thing to keep in mind with portions. So ideally we want at least half of our plate to be non-starchy, colorful vegetables and really getting in a wide variety of colors. Uh, different colors have different nutrients. So the more variety we get with them, the better. Um, so aiming for half your plate is a good, good rule of thumb. And then a fourth of your plate, you want it to be a protein. So this could be um, animal protein or plant-based protein. So either or. And then the other fourth of your plate to be more from a carbohydrate. So with carbohydrates, we want to consume, you know, mostly complex carbs, things that are rich in fiber and vitamins and minerals um, that are really going to nourish us and prevent spikes in blood sugar. Um, obviously, through the holidays, a lot of the dishes we will consume are mostly carbs and um, offsetting it with some protein and fiber is going to help con control our blood sugar. But just keeping this plate idea in mind, um, having these portions, that's going to help make sure you're not over consuming, you know, maybe more carbs or more calories and get a lot of good um, nutrients in. The other way you can measure portions is using your hand. So the size of your thumb is roughly a tablespoon. So this would be you know, appropriate for maybe almond butter, um, piece of cheese, something like that. And then the size of your palm, that is roughly three ounces. If, you know, you're a bigger guy, it may be more like five or six ounces. Um, but this is a good measurement that you could use for animal protein. So for, let's say a chicken breast, you know, roughly the size of your palm is a good portion. Um, whereas fish, you could use your palm, but I like to think about like the size of a checkbook. That's a good portion for fish. And then your fingertip, this is a teaspoon. So this would be for, you know, some, some fats, dietary fat. So like butter, mayo, stuff like that. And then your fist would be roughly the size of a cup. So um, if you had half of your plate veggies, one cup is equal to, well, one cup raw of vegetables and then half of a cup cooked is a serving of non-starchy vegetables. So you could think a cup uh, is your fist and then a handful is a half of a cup. And um, a half a cup would also be good for some of those starches. That would be a good portion. So hopefully that gives you a good idea um, on portions and how much to consume for each food category. Okay, so this is something that I see a lot um, is this idea of saving your calories. And I really want to deter you from doing that um, because this can cause extreme hunger, and most of the times this is going to lead to you consuming more calories in the long run than if you were to just have your normal balanced meals um, and then, you know, have that, that holiday dinner meal as well. Um, see this a lot of times at Thanksgiving when we're, you know, people are saving their calories for the big feast. Um, but again, that can just lead to us consuming more and then, you know, not feeling probably too great afterwards. We're so stuffed, you know, unbuttoning our pants. Uh, so it's going to, you know, make you feel better, have good energy throughout the day and good blood sugar. 
So when we are saving our calories, this can lead to altered blood sugar and it can actually slow down our metabolism. Um, so having three balanced meals every day is really important. And, you know, if you know you're going to consume a heavier meal than normal, like let's say at dinner, it's okay to have a lighter meal at lunch or breakfast or so, but it's still important to get those three meals in um, to have good energy. And then that will prevent you from overeating later on as well. Um, the other thing I want to mention, I've seen this a lot as well, is people tend to undereat. And when we're under eating, that can actually shift our body into that fight or flight mode where it's almost like survival mode. Um, so we really want to make sure that we're nourishing our body well and not only just for good energy, um, but also to um, help with a good managed weight blood sugar, all of the above. So do not try not to save your calories and have those three balanced meals. So I like to show this. This is a chart of uh, blood sugar response in healthy adults using a high glycemic index meal versus a low glycemic index meal. But if you pay attention to this green line, this is how we want your blood sugars to look after a meal and throughout the day. So we want your blood sugars to be like a consistent wave, uh, you know, breakfast, go lunch, dinner, where as we don't want it to be like a roller coaster where it's spike and dip, spike, dip. Uh, when we have those consistent blood sugars, we're going to feel full. We're going to have good energy um, and, you know, we're not going to feel lightheaded or anything like that or have sugar crashes. So the way that we're able to do that is consuming the three balanced meals. That'll keep your blood sugar like a consistent wave. And when I say balanced meals, what I mean is having, having lean protein, having good fiber, mainly from vegetables if you can. Um, also some healthy fats in there. And then complex carb, we can mix a few of that in as well. And that's going to stabilize our blood sugar overall. And um, we want to have those three meals a day. So that brings me to this. I mentioned protein and fiber. Um, you know, a lot of the holiday dishes that we consume are really rich in carbohydrates, but are lacking protein and fiber. Um, so protein can actually increase your metabolism and help support the levels of our appetite reducing hormones like leptin. So with protein, you want to aim to have three to five ounces per meal of protein. And that can be animal protein or it can be plant-based protein, whatever your preference is. Um, but ultimately, having that protein with your holiday meal um, is going to be really crucial to help support that blood sugar. And then also fiber. Fiber is super important. So fiber not only helps to support our blood sugar, but it helps to maintain and support our gut health. So with fiber, you want to aim for 25 to 38 grams of fiber a day. So um, Ideally for women, it's more around 25. Men, it's on the higher end, 38. Uh, but 25 is a good number to keep in mind for our fiber. And different fibrous food sources would include our vegetables, uh, beans, nuts, legumes, nut, uh, I said nuts, nuts and seeds, and then whole grains and fruit. So we can get a variety of fiber by incorporating wide diversity of all of these different foods. So I would suggest to aim for, you know, one to two servings of non-starchy vegetables per meal or five servings per day. And that 
you know, that could seem like a lot for some people. So analyze where you are and, you know, I'd encourage you at least try to add on one to two extra servings from where you are. And five servings a day um, is just a good number to keep in mind. So as a reminder, one serving of non-starchy vegetables is half of a cup cooked or one cup raw. The other thing to help our blood sugar and also help to support our appetite hormones um, and prevent overindulging is the order of um, foods that we consume. So this is kind of new research that's coming out, um, but if we consume our vegetables and our protein first before anything, that can actually help to um, the vegetables kind of like coat our stomach and protein helps us, you know, feel fuller quicker. So that can prevent us from over consuming on, you know, sweets and carbohydrates later on. And then I have to mention healthy fats. Um, a lot of the holiday dishes and, you know, meals we consume are high in saturated and potentially trans fats. And those fats are harder on our heart, um, can increase risk for cardiovascular diseases and problems. So we really want to get, you know, our healthy fats in like our mono and poly unsaturated fats. Um, this will help to keep us fuller for longer. Uh, obviously, fat will add flavor to meals, but then it can help to reduce inflammation. So omega-3 fats are anti-inflammatory, whereas omega-6, which is common in a lot of uh, standard American diet foods, is more pro-inflammatory. So we really want to try to get in um, some healthy fats. So whether that's at the holiday meal or having, you know, a snack of nuts, let's say, that's going to help control blood sugar and um, help to reduce inflammation. Okay. So the other big thing to, you know, staying healthy is really limiting our liquid calories. So a lot of sugary beverages can contribute to weight gain. For example, soda, uh, juices, sugary coffee drinks, eggnog is a big one in the holidays. Um, and, you know, these have a lot of added sugars and this can um, promote insulin resistance, lead to, you know, high blood sugar levels and then promote some weight gain. So this is a really good area to kind of look into if you're wanting to lose some weight, you know, cutting out some of these sugary beverages and incorporating more uh, water. And, you know, there's like LaCroix, um, different beverages that are low or zero calorie that are good options to switch to. Um, one statistic that I just want to say, not a statistic, but just a good fact is one soda, one 12 ounce soda contains roughly 150 calories and about 40 grams of sugar. So. 40 grams of sugar is roughly equal to 10 teaspoons of cane sugar. So it's quite a bit in there if you think about it in um, one can. So this can add up really quick if we're having, you know, quite a bit of sugary beverages throughout, throughout our days. And then there is research that shows um, consuming sweetened beverages with meals is actually linked to overeating as well. And I read this uh, peer review study and it showed that adults who drink sugar sweetened beverages with meals actually consume 7.8% more food than adults who consumed water with meals. So just food for thought there. Um, if we cut back on our sugary beverages, this can help support our blood sugar. You know, we'll have good energy and then help to manage our weight and support a healthy weight. Um, the other big thing is alcohol. So we really want to 
consume alcohol in moderation. Um, you know, although moderate amounts of dry red wine do have some health benefits with the antioxidants, it's really not risk free. So alcohol, we know, impairs our judgment, um, but it can also increase our appetite and lead to overeating, um, poor sleep, and contribute to our liver damage long term. The other thing, if you do choose to have, you know, an alcoholic, alcoholic drink, um, I would recommend not to have that on an empty stomach because that will most likely contribute to you being hungrier later um, and overindulging potentially. And then just to keep in mind, you know, one serving size would be five ounces of wine, one and a half ounces of liquor, and then about 12 ounces of beer. So the recommended amount um, would be two drinks a day for men or one drink a day for women. Um, but really, I would say if you're able to even do less than that and cut back, that's going to be better, better for our health overall, our liver health, um, and help to support our appetite, our sleep, um, a lot of different aspects in our, in our body. Okay, so going along with that, um, with fluids, we want to stay hydrated. So water is roughly 60% of our body weight. And hydration is a big part of nutrition that tends to get overlooked. Um, but it's so crucial for good digestion, absorption, proper cognition, uh, blood pressure, energy, among many others. So, you know, making sure we're staying hydrated is, is very important. So you want to aim to drink at least half of your body weight in fluid ounces. So an example here, if you're 140 pounds, you would want to drink about 70 fluid ounces each day. And then if you are sweating during exercise or whatever, you would want to actually consume more than that because we want to replenish lost fluids. So some good tips is to aim to drink one glass of water before each meal. And this can actually help to distinguish um, between hunger and thirst. Because sometimes, you know, when we feel hungry, we're actually thirsty and just dehydrated. So trying to have a glass of water before each meal will help us to fill up and not be as hungry. Um, and then also just get in more water. When you have coffee, um, coffee is a diuretic. And then also when we have alcohol, we can become dehydrated. So whenever you do have these, I would recommend to have a glass of water with them. That way you're, you are staying hydrated, drinking those as well. Um, some signs of dehydration would be obviously thirst, um, hunger, like I said. So if you don't know, if you just ate and you're like, well, I'm not that hungry, you probably need some more water. Um, brain fog is another one, fatigue, uh, dry skin. And then a good marker is whenever you urinate, looking at the color of your urine. So we want to aim for a light yellow color. If you think of like a light yellow post-it note, that's a good color to aim for. And then I have to mention minerals because it's not only about the water. Uh, minerals are a really big deal to staying so cellularly hydrated. Uh, magnesium, potassium, calcium, and then sodium and chloride as well. So our sweat is predominantly made of sodium chloride. So if you're exercising and you're sweating a lot, you know, we really want to make sure to replenish not only the lost fluids, but the lost minerals. Um, so incorporating an electrolyte supplement may not be a bad idea if this is, you know, something you um, experiment or experience being a sweater, uh, but just getting in enough water, staying hydrated, and also good quality water is essential as well. Okay, so let's talk about preparing and planning. 
So for events, you could bring a healthy dish to share with others, and that will guarantee that you have something to consume that's nutritious and in line with your weight goals. Also, looking at the menu prior to an event, um, what foods are going to be served, and then have a game plan onto what you plan to order or consume at that event. And that will just help you plan um, beforehand and have a good, good idea going into it. The other thing is having a healthy snack before events. Um, this will help to prevent overeating, overindulging on sweets and alcohol and other health, unhealthy foods. So a good snack to have would be like a handful of nuts. That's going to help you stay satisfied and then more likely to make healthier food choices at the event. So during the holidays, we know this is a busy season, right? So meal prepping for healthy convenience could be a really good idea. When we're unprepared and hunger strikes, we typically will just grab the first thing that we find um, to you know, help us feel full and not hangry again. Uh, so meal prepping can be a good idea to just have those healthy foods um, on hand that we're able to grab and feel good consuming. So, you know, preparing some healthy snacks, some healthy meals, um, stocking the fridge with healthy options to prepare dinner at home. This will not only have good healthy convenience, but it can seem save some time and save some money in the long run too. Um, some good, easy meal prep ideas would be making some soups, potentially sheet pan meals where you just have a baking sheet, you do your veggies, maybe some sweet potatoes and um, some chicken, put it in the oven, all bakes together and then you have a perfect dinner right there. Um, the other thing you could do is double, double a recipe. So, you know, making a recipe, just double it, and then you'll have leftovers for later. You could freeze it, heat it up later, or, you know, store it in your fridge for a week or so. Um, so that's just a few options there. The other thing you could do if you're in a pinch, you could purchase some healthy meals from Palm. Um, another good service that's in the St. Louis area is Fit Flavors, and that's uh, meals that are already pre-prepped in a container and just pop it in the microwave. But here at Palm, we have a lot of really good, healthy, wholesome options. And we do have our light menu, which is calorie-friendly, macronutrient-friendly, um, very delicious too, I will say. I've tried a lot of them, and they're all very filling and good nutritious foods. Okay, so throughout the next couple months, it can be um, important to incorporate some seasonal produce. So here's two lists. We got our vegetables and fruits. So the cruciferous vegetables, this is going to be things like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, um, those are really wonderful for detoxification, but all of these are going to give you really good nutrients um, and support our health overall. So the thing, the benefit with seasonal produce is that they're cheaper, um, more cost efficient, which is always nice. Um, they are more nutritious and they're more readily available. So it's kind of like win, win, win <laughs> right there with those. So next time you're at the grocery store, try to pick up a few of these uh, vegetables and fruit. So we all know apples, that's a big one. Um, cranberries, figs. Um, one good one I like to mention is the winter squashes. So this would be like our acorn, or I'm sorry, butternut squash right here, but acorn squash is another one and spaghetti squash, um, obviously pumpkin as well. So these different winter squashes are really high in fiber, 
Um, it is technically a starchy vegetable. So that would be classified more as a carbohydrate rather than a non-starchy vegetable, uh, but still wonderful to incorporate lots of good fiber and nutrients there. Uh, the other thing is, you know, just getting a variety of these, the more I mentioned this before, but the more variety and diversity you have with your produce, the more nutrients and different fibers you're going to get. Okay, so some healthy ingredient swaps. So these are really helpful if, you know, you still want to make your favorite holiday dish, but potentially just a more modified, healthy version. And it's really easy to do. You would just make a few ingredient swaps. So instead of refined sugar, consuming maple syrup, I'm sorry, adding maple syrup, honey, coconut sugar, stevia, or monk fruit for some uh, sugar-free options there. Also, instead of white flour, doing whole wheat flour, almond flour, coconut flour. And then vegetable oils, subbing these out for extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, uh, avocado oil could be another one, or applesauce. And then sour cream, mayo, cream cheese, a good substitute would be plain Greek yogurt. That adds a lot of protein as well. And then heavy whipping cream, this one's commonly used a lot in uh, holiday dishes. So subbing that for canned coconut milk or cashew cream that you can make at home. And then butter. Um, ghee butter is a really good option. It's clarified butter and it's actually a good source of healthy fats. Applesauce, you know, a mashed banana or pumpkin puree could be another um, swap. Okay, so I want to mention these micronutrients. So vitamin D is really important for our mood, our sleep, and our immunity. So some food sources of vitamin D include mushrooms, eggs, salmon, sardines, cod liver oil, beef liver, fortified soy products, uh, fortified milk, and orange juice. Um, moving on to vitamin C, vitamin C is really good for immunity. Um, it is a strong antioxidant that can help protect our cells from oxidative damages. And some foods, as we know, citrus fruit is really good, uh, bell peppers, those cruciferous vegetables, and tomatoes. Um, magnesium, this is a really important one because magnesium gets depleted a lot in our soil. So we don't get a ton through our foods and then also, if we're living a high stress life, um, magnesium in our body can become depleted pretty quickly. So making sure to get a variety of different foods with magnesium, like dark leafy greens, beans and legumes, pumpkin seeds, almonds, uh, bananas, dark chocolate, avocados are uh, pretty essential to incorporate in. And then omega-3 fats, I mentioned this before, uh, but Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory and can help a lot with cognition, our mood, and support our cardiovascular health. So some uh, food sources there would be the fatty fish, olive oil, avocados, olives, nuts, and seeds, for example. And then probiotics, not, they're not technically a micronutrient, but I just threw them on here because we've been talking a lot about gut health and probiotics are really great to help add more diversity in and help support our gut health. So some food sources would be, you know, fermented vegetables like um, sauerkraut or um, kimchi is another one. Greek yogurt is great. Kefir and kombucha is another option. So with a lot of these, you know, supplementation may be necessary. So always check with your provider for your specific needs on any of these nutrients. Okay, so we can't talk about how to stay healthy through the holidays without mentioning the other aspects of health. So we talked about nutrition. Um, we will talk about circadian rhythm, staying active, and then stress management. 
Because mm. after all, you know, we are integrative beings and to really support our health, we want to look at all of these areas. So ways to support your circadian rhythm is aiming for seven to nine hours of sleep each night. Um, so, you know, our circadian rhythm is really important to help those hormones um, like our melatonin, our cortisol, the ghrelin, leptin, and insulin. Um, it does, you know, control our appetite, metabolism, energy levels, and cognition, so on. So really getting good quality sleep is crucial during the next couple of months and obviously throughout your life. So aiming for the seven to nine hours is a good uh, rule of thumb to aim for every night. And then a good way to do that is create a bedtime or morning time routine. And this will help to um, just support your body and being able to get in that rest and relaxation state. And then a morning routine helps you get you up and going throughout the day. The other thing is going to bed and waking up at the same time every day. That will help to support that rhythm. And then getting bright light first thing in the morning. So if you're able to go outside and get sunshine and get that bright light, that's going to help support your cortisol hormone. And then we all know uh, reducing electronics at night. And, you know, if you're a little cautious on that, maybe just incorporating some blue light blocking glasses and that can help to support our melatonin production as well. The other tip is staying active. So the American Heart Association, CDC, a lot of these companies um, recommend 150 minutes of aerobic exercise per week. So what that means is um, getting good cardio per se, but reaching 80% of your max volume. So really trying to get that heart racing, um, you want to be essentially huffing and puffing, not being able to hold a full conversation. And that's going to be really great for cardiovascular health. The other thing that's important is weightlifting, and that's going to really help to build lean muscle. Um, so we want to, you know, make sure we're getting good weight training in. Ideally, I would say aiming for, you know, two, three days a week, if you can. And I'm sure you've all seen this quote or heard it before, but sitting is the new smoking. So we want to get up and walk around every 30 minutes. If you notice that you've been sitting for a long time, um, just walk up or get up, walk around the house and get moving a little bit. And that will help to support your metabolism overall. And if 30 minutes, you know, is too soon, potentially every hour. Some other tips is, you know, walking, walking after dinner, or after a meal with your family and being active with your loved ones. That way you're still able to um, conversate, spend time with them, but being active. And then I threw, I put dancing on here because it's always fun to dance. <laughs> so, you know, dancing with family or loved ones that actually can burn some calories and um, get you staying active. So the other thing to mention through the holidays with the busy schedule, it's it's hard to have that routine of making sure we're exercising. So potentially like splitting up your 30 minute workout, do 10 minutes of walking in the morning, potentially 10 minutes of a home workout later, um, 10 minutes of dancing, you know, whatever it is. I'll just say really try to make it a priority to stay active during the next couple of months because um, that's going to help you lower stress, help to manage your weight overall, and reduce risk of chronic disease. Okay, and then stress management. So as I mentioned before, you know, this could be a stressful time for a lot of us. So managing our stress is really important. So I'd recommend trying to incorporate at least an hour of stress management per day. 
And here at Palm, we have a lot of good ways to do that. So our wellness therapies, like our uh, steam room, sauna, our salt room, here's a beautiful picture of it. Also cryotherapy, our biomat, pens mat, among the other therapies that we offer. Um, diaphragmatic breathing is really good. So we breathe everywhere, <laughs> right? Uh, we can't live without breathing. So this is a really nice one that you can do wherever you go. If you start to feel overwhelmed, just take a few deep breaths, um, really engage that diaphragm. Uh, meditation is another one. We offer a meditation class at Palm that you're able to attend. And you know, if that's new, to, meditation is new to you, that could be a class to join um, and just learn kind of ease your way into it. And then same goes for yoga. We do offer good classes here. And then this is something I like to do is have a gratitude journal. So just having that heart posture of gratitude is really helpful to um, help you go throughout your day with a, a positive perspective and you know realize the important things in life. Um, the last two are uh, supplements essentially, but adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha is a popular one right now, or holy basil. Um, we sell these supplements here, but they can actually help to lower your cortisol hormone and just give you that sense of calm and focus. So maybe that's something you discuss with your provider about potentially incorporating. And then also a adrenal mocktail. So, you know, maybe have, instead of having that second glass of wine or even alcohol in general, these adrenal mocktails can help to um, calm your nerves, and just provide that sense of release and stress. And basically what this is, is um, there's different ways to make it, but one good example is Topo Chico with a scoop of magnesium and a squeeze of lime. That's a popular one, um, but there's a lot of other recipes as well. Okay, so now, we covered a lot of material. So, you know, I would encourage you to put it into practice, you know, really sit down, create some realistic goals that you feel like you can stick to. And um, incorporating one to two healthy changes at a time is going to help them set in stone and last long term and be sustainable. So, it could be the mindful eating, it could be, you know, doing a yoga yoga class here, could be adding in more vegetables, whatever it is. Um, you know yourself better than anyone. So really just think what goal can I create that I can stick to during the holiday season. And then most of all, um, you know, all of these strategies can help you stay healthy this holiday season and really support your sleep, your energy, mood, your gut health, immunity, appetite, and healthy weight. Um, but just remember what the season is all about. It's about celebrating and connecting with the people you care about. But obviously, you want to feel healthy and have good energy um, to enjoy the holidays with them. So um, we are running a little low on time, but these are the recipes that I have. So um, all of these recipes are actually mine. I've created them, tried them many times, and I can tell you they are delicious um, and healthy as well. So the first one is the apple walnut cranberry salad. Um, you can see all of the ingredients here. This is a really good one if you want to bring a healthy dish to a party or in a family gathering. This could be a good one to bring. It's still festive. Um, delicious, but healthy and has a good amount of fiber. And then here are the directions. So pretty simple. Just want to put it all together in a bowl. Um, and then to make this into a meal, you could just add some lean protein and then you would have a good meal. So that's another option. 
So this is my famous white chicken chili. It is dairy free for everyone that has dairy sensitivities. Um, but this is a really good one and perfect for the cold, cold weather that we're experiencing right now in St. Louis. Uh, but it's really high in fiber, really good source of protein, has good nutrients in there as well. So I'm not gonna go through all these just to save some time, but here are the directions. And this is recorded, so you can always go back and look at this as well. So the last one, this is one of my favorites, is our uh, my chocolate chip pumpkin muffins. So uh, this is how they turn out. They're honestly really moist and delicious. So I would encourage you to make this one as well. And all the ingredients are whole foods, clean, um, and this would be another good one that you could bring to a party as well. And here is the directions. So thank you all so much for taking the time to listen to me today. It's been a pleasure to share some of these strategies, and I really hope that you are able to at least take one or two things from here that you can implement throughout the holiday season in um, order to stay healthy. And if you want to stick around for just a second, we do have a new program here at Paul, Palm that we're only going to be offering through the holiday season. So I'm gonna talk about that one real quick. So this is our healthy holidays package. So, you know, all of these tips are great options to try on your own, the ones that I've discussed. But if you think you may need some additional support through the holiday season, um, you could consider getting this package. So it would be working one on one with myself. Um, I would essentially create a nutrition plan that's tailored to you. It would be focusing on moderation and balance. Um, potentially weight loss, if that's one of your goals, and then keeping your diet healthy during the holidays while still being able to enjoy some of your favorite holiday treats um, and keeping your nutrition on track throughout the season. So what this package includes is two one-hour nutrition counseling appointments with myself. Um, just to assess your current nutrition habits and then make a plan for the holiday season. And then after those two hour appointments, there will be six 15 minute nutrition check ins to help you stay accountable and discuss your progress, any challenges that you may be having, as well as other updates. So with this package, you would have consistent support, accountability, and a plan to stick to through the holiday season. So if you're interested in getting started with this, uh, you can contact our navigator, Kim Sella, at 314-801-8898 and click option zero. Or you can email her at ksella at palmhealth.com. All right, thank you all so much for taking the time and spending it with me today. And I hope you were able to take away a few um, healthy strategies that you can incorporate this holiday season. All right, thank you guys, have a good day.